హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఈఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్ సెట్ బయాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ మోడ్యూల్ థర్టీన్ వీ షెల్ కంటిన్యూ అవర్ స్టడీ ఆఫ్ పెరాకాంపాక్ట్నెస్ ఫర్ సబ్స్పేసిస్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్ఎన్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ రిజల్ట్ విచ్ సేస్ దాట్ every open cover has a subordinate partition of unity consisting of smooth functions the word smooth will not have any meaning when you are studying arbitrary topological spaces and para compactness of that or partition of unity of that inside are in such a thing is possible and what is the additional thing that we have to do there namely on every disk you can have what is called as a bump function for more you can see this uh, reference here the second thing is the local compactness in a very special way for our namely the closed disks themselves are compact okay so if you carefully study the the proof that we have given earlier okay then we can get a similar result for any metric space with the help of decomposition of any open set into a countable union of increasing disk like open sets what i mean to say that is the compactness is not all that necessary here the local compactness so something else will come to help namely the metric metric property and that is what we are going to do for more general results you may consult again kelly's book okay so i will do the bare minimum here to expose you to the ideas behind this course is not uh, something you can say concise or comprehensive and so on. okay every pseudo metric space is para compact so this is a big theorem now so slowly we have to have some patience slowly we will be develop it and the development itself is quite educative okay so first of all let us have some notation here for every subset of the pseudo metric space for each integer n let us have a notation a n a is a subset and n is an integer a n is set of all x inside x such that distance of x from a complement is bigger than 1 by 2 power n okay a may be any set you take the complement and from there the distance must be at least 1 by 2 power n. automatically these are subsets of a n subsets of a okay okay so one thing where is very easy to see is that using triangle inequality distance between an and an plus 1 complement will be bigger than equal to 1 by 2 power n minus 1 by 2 power n plus 1 which is 1 by 2 power n plus 1 okay so i again leave this elementary thing as an exercise to you note that for each a and each n what we have is this one this is also easy a n is contained in a n bar that is obvious always but a n bar is contained inside a n plus 1 and again a n plus 1 is contained inside a so already we have this is what we want it right only thing is these a i's are not compact or anything but we have this increasing un increasing uh, phenomena a n contained in a n bar contained in plus 1 contained in third a and each a n is open so that is because this is this condition bigger than 1 by 2 power n okay so closure will be what bigger than or equal to so that's all 
So that is the reason why you have these are open subsets and n contains the n bar, etc. Moreover, if a itself is open, then only a will be the union of a n. In what we have proved earlier was when you have locally compact uh, Lindelof space, every open subset can be written like this with each a n bar compact and so on. That is not that is not uh, what we have here, but something which we have saved here, namely with the use of metric space, we were able to write every open subset as union of countable union, union of a n with this property, a n contained a n bar contained a n plus 1. Okay. So, that is what I meant by, you know, writing every open set as a union of disk-like open sets. See, it's a n minus 1, that is a n, and the whole thing is that a, slowly you will approach this a. Okay, they are nested very strongly in the sense that the, the previous thing is contained in n plus 1, that is just nested, but the closure itself is contained in n plus 1. Okay, so these are just notations now. You have to remember this one for the rest of the proof. Let now u be an open cover for x. We want to extract a locally finite open refinement. That is our purpose finally. Choose a well ordered on u. So again here you have used uh, axiom of choice or this on the mind. Every set can be well ordered. Okay. For each n belonging to n and for each u inside u, let us set up another set of notation now. U n be the be defined as in one. U n there is no there is no change. Okay, U n is just instead of A here, put U. Okay. U n is except for all x belong to X such so that distance between x and u complement is bigger than by 2 power n. But more definition I am going to give you, namely u n star is a subset of u n wherein I have thrown away, this, this is the set theoretic uh, complement, set theoretic minus. Interior of all the v n plus 1s where v occurs before u u is some element in this curly u, it is well ordered, okay, so it is an ordering, so you take all the initial elements to u and take all their u v n plus 1 part only, not the full v, and then take the union of all of them, okay, n is fixed here, v is varying, v is varying only this part, initial segment. Okay, take the interior of all this union and throw it away. Okay, u n star is that. So here is a picture of u and u one and v one. Okay, u is the given one. V occurring this v occurring before u. Okay, so if you look at v one star, there is nothing. Suppose V1 was V was the first one and U was the second one. There is no throwing because there is uh, there is nothing below be, be, before that. So V1 star will be, be uh, full thing here. But U1 star, what will happen? I will have to throw away V2, right? V is there, so V2 has to be thrown away here. Okay, so that is U1 star only this part. Okay. Because of u n and v n definition, if you take any element of u and any element of v 2 here, the distance will be at least one fourth. In particular, distance between any element here and any element here will be at least one fourth. Okay, so this is the picture that is showing. So why we are making this kind of, you know, adding or subtracting some portions of 
earlier elements only. That is what we are doing here. The U N star is this one. So only U N V one picture I have shown. So you have to do if you selecting one year element U here. You have to do this for all V. Okay. So for all V before you, which occur before you in this well order. The well order could be any order. Doesn't matter. Just one well order you have to fix once for all. Okay. Then U N star is a closed subset of U N. Okay. Contained inside you. So why is a closed subset? What I have deleted some open subset. That's all. It's interior of something, whatever it is. If you delete an open subset. It will be a closed subset of whatever, wherever you have it. Closed subset of U N. Okay, so that is what it is, and it is a subset. U N is contained inside you. If U and V are not equal, they are different, distinct elements of you. Then U N star is inside X minus V N plus one, or V N star is in X minus V N plus one, depending on. Whether v is first or u is first, okay? V is before u or u is before v. All right, because if v is before u, v n plus one will get subtracted from u n. Other or otherwise, u n plus one will subtract from this is all. Okay, so that is the definition. Therefore, in either case, what happens is from this general remark here. Distance between a n and a n plus one complement is bigger than one by two power n plus one, which I showed you in this picture. What happens is distance between u n star and v n star is always bigger than equal to one by two power n plus one. So in this picture, it was n equal to one, so it's one fourth. Okay. So you don't have to. Do any pictures at all? If you follow the logic one by step, each step is a very small picture in your mind. Okay. After that, you have to just use whatever you have proved before. All right. So, if you use uh, property two, this should be obvious. The sec, the next thing is each x belongs to U n for some n and some u. Right. First of all, it belongs to some U because U is a cover. But once it belongs to some U, from the complement of U, its distance will be positive. So there will be some one by n for which it is be smaller than that, bigger than that. So that is all you have to show. Then it will be inside U n. Okay. So for first you chose choose U first. Okay. U such that X is inside U. And then, since U is open, and we have union of U and is equal to U. Okay, so one of X must be inside one of the U ends. Okay, we put now U and hat is. See, <laughs> you can get bored. So first you had U and star here. Now U and hat is set of all X such that distance between X and U and star is less than one by two power n plus three. Okay, and U and twiddle is all those x such that distance between x and U and star is one by two power one more two power n plus four. Okay, so both of them are here. This is less than. This is less than or equal to that. You have to pay attention. Each U N is open once again, and U N twiddle is closed because there is equality here, and because this is two power n plus four, U N twiddle will be contained inside U N hat. Once again, the same property two will tell you the distance between U N hat and V N hat is bigger than or equal to one divided by two power n plus two. Okay, for every u, for every v inside you. So this time you can directly use 
the fifth property here that distance between un star and un star is 1 divided by 2 n plus 1. Okay. So, u n hat v n hat similarly you can talk about u n twiddle this u n twiddle really will not be needed in the in the final proof, but it will play some auxiliary role. So, I have kept it. Okay. So, distance between u n twiddle and v n twiddle is 1 by 2 power sorry u n hat or u n hat 1 by 2 power n plus 2 and they are open subsets. No matter whether u occurs first or v occurs first. Next, for each n inside uh, natural number, put v n equal to this collection u n hat, where u ranges over all of u. Okay, so each member is a open subset. So this is an open family of open sets. All right. Take v to be union of v n. So we have written v as a countable union of these families. What is the property of these v n and v? V is an open cover for x. Not v n, but when you take all of them, v that is an open cover for x, and v is a refinement of u. Okay. So how to check x? The, this uh, tenth one. This can be checked as follows. As in the case of six, what we have what we have done here, that each x belongs to some u n. Okay. So each x will belong to some u n star also is what you have to say. Okay. In as in six, choose first u so that x is inside u. Then x will be inside some u n first, okay. But then it is also in u n star because it does not belong to any v. All those v's which you have subtracted, it will not be inside v. So that will be in u n star. All right. But why it is in u n hat? Since u n star is contained inside u n hat, we are done. Okay, indeed, this also proves that x itself is in u n twiddle also because u n stars are contained in the u n twiddle also. Okay. So, remember these are less than less than. So, u n hat and u n twiddle actually fatten the u n star. Right? All those which are of uh, distance smaller than that one. So, you have to understand this inequality. Here in the beginning we are bigger than bigger than. Right? So, both of them are used. Left and right you are cutting down things. Alright. So, we are we know that this u n s and u n twiddles u n twiddles are closed. V itself is an open cover. Okay. So, that much we have done. Okay. And it is a refinement of u because all these elements are for each u n is subset of u corresponding u, right? So, they are inside u. All right. Now, look at u n star is contained as a u n. So, u n hat, which is actually all those x belong to x. So, the distance between x and u n is 1 by 2 power n plus 3. I am just recalling this definition. It is contained inside u n plus 2. Okay. And that is contained inside. See, u n was contained in u n plus 1, but u n hat is not contained in u n plus 1, but in contained in u n plus 2. Okay. So, that is contained inside u. Okay. So, all these all these u n hats are also it is also an open cover for uh, it is also a refinement of v. Okay. So, finally, I will have one more notation here. Let u n check equal to u n hat minus union of all v k twiddles v belonging to u and k is less than n. So, this is where the twiddles are used. Okay. This is the only case where we have to do. What we are doing now? u n check case 
I don't want even you and hat. I am I am checking away some portion of that. Namely, these are closed subsets now. Take the union of all these V K hat, where V is inside you, but the integer K is smaller than n now. All V I am taking inside you, but K must be less than n. So you you throw away that part. Note that this V K twiddle where k is less than n there is a bound for uh, under k v k twiddles but v itself is in the entire of you this is a locally finite family of closed sets okay therefore it follows that each u n check is open when you have a locally fine remember this uh, thing about locally finiteness locally finite family of closed sets when you take arbitrary union it is still a closed set okay so this whole thing is closed set the complement will be an open subset now u and hats were open subset this u and twiddles were not they were closed subset so u and check these are open subset okay I have a question. Why this family is locally finite? Because you have taken only finitely many of them. Okay. So what is V K? If you take any two of them different from same V, the same K, they are actually disjoint. So that is what this property you may have to use. U and hat, V and hat. Don't worry about U and V here. I mean, what they are? They are two different elements of U V, uh, of capital U, curly U. Okay, their distance between them is bigger than one by two power n plus n two power n plus two. Okay. Uh, sir, I have one more question here. Hmm. Uh, so starting with the open cover hmm. first we made un stars hmm. the collection of which is also a cover for x but uh, that was not open that's yes. why you consider you right right x. so they are not they are closed subsets actually yeah yeah hmm. and uh, so this uh, un head collection hmm. was the open refinement hmm. but uh, that may not be locally finite Yes. So that's why you are coming to U and check, right? Yes, that this this precisely uh, uh, subtracting these things, you know, we can add that, that will make it U and check locally finite. We will see that. Okay, yeah. So first of all, U and check is open now. You see, we we didn't even stop at U and had also. Okay. So first of all, these are open itself. You you have to look for that these these things are locally finite. That is fine. We can, but they are closed things, right? So now these are open subset. First thing. So what we want to do is that this is now take W to be the collection of all subsets of the form U and hat. U range over U, n range over n. Okay, that is like. All U N's first N fixed and then taking the union uh, over N, you can say double like that. That is a cover of X. It's an open refinement. This is locally finite itself. All right. There is no sigma locally finiteness here. <laughs> this W is actually locally finite. So we have to prove this. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right. To say how do you prove thirteen? Thirteen is that the x that w covers the whole thing. Okay, given any x, again let n be the first integer such as x belongs to u and twiddle for some u. Okay, once it is in some u, there will be some n for which it belongs to. Okay, so let take x belong to some the first u and twiddle for some u. It follows that. It is not occurring here at all, right? Because all these before that I have uh, 
k less than n i am taken but n is the first one to which it belongs to it will not be inside some other uh, uk k less than n so this part it is not there so it must be inside u n check so once it is here it will be inside u n check so that is the trick here so these things cover okay 14th is what it's an open refinement we have we have told it's this open and these are refinements they are all subsets of u that is clear 15th is why it's locally finite okay to see the 15th one notice that u and twiddle chosen as above is a neighborhood of x and does not intersect any v m check for m bigger than n because these n twiddle u n twiddle would have been subtracted from v m right so it does not intersect v m twiddle at all therefore if we choose 0 less than r less than 1 divided by 2 power n plus 3 okay then this ball b r x which will be contained inside u n twiddle okay I, I, oh sorry, what I want to say, R must be less than this, it may be even further smaller, so that BRX is contained in UN twiddle, because UN twiddles are open subsets, uh, uh, neighborhoods, okay, they are open subsets also. Then BRX will intersect at most one member of VM, okay, because M less than equal to N, n less than root m both of them it cannot be as soon as m, m it will not intersect anything smaller or bigger one fix one of them it will intersect okay so that is why this 1 by 2 power n plus 3 i have to show once there is an r such that v r of x is in u n twiddle you can make it smaller than any further also you can take it smaller than 1 by 2 power n plus 3 also okay so if such a choice is possible then it happens that it will intersect only one of them okay so this completes the proof of the theorem there is a remark here which which is a bit uh, deep, takes you a little deeper so i don't mind even if you don't understand in the first reading okay so, but uh, I will make this remark. A family A of subsets of topological space is called sigma discrete family. If each x belong to x has a neighborhood which meets at most one member of A. So, one of you asked this question. That is why this remark will be even more relevant here now. So, why is sigma locally? What happens is, you see, this condition right in the beginning, distance between these two is bigger than minus 2 power n plus 1. So, this u n stars and v n stars, same n, but u and v are different elements of the same cover. What happens to these sets? They are disjoint, right? Not only that, this is stronger than being disjoint. Namely, I can take small open subsets around them, right? For all of them, around all of them simultaneously, such that all these neighborhoods are disjoint. So, <laughs> because of this uh, metric property, we are able to do that one. Such a thing is, you can make that as an axiom in the general case, okay? then it be, it's called sigma discrete or oh, that's what I am trying to say here a family is discrete family if each point x belongs to x has a neighborhood which means at most one member of a okay you see if the distance between a is something positive each point x I can take the ball of radius half of that distance whatever positive I say half the half that radius then what I get is that that open ball cannot intersect both of them that's all okay so that is what we have achieved here okay it is called sigma discrete if it is a union of countable union of 
ends where each n is discrete. Okay, so that is why that n has come. When you fix n, it is a discrete family. You take the union, it becomes a uh, cover and so on. Okay, only countable union you take. Such a thing is called sigma discrete. This family A itself is not discrete. Okay, that is one, one thing you have to understand. It is sigma discrete. Properties is 8 to 9 say which that this V which we have constructed is sigma discrete open refinement of U. So, in general what one does it without assuming matrix space you would like to uh, prove this one out of some other property by making this uh, this definition sigma discreteness okay we have not used this concept anywhere in the course and so that is what i want to say if you prefer you can simply ignore it for the time being if you are interested more then you can look into kelly's book okay So, coming back to Rn, we have remarked earlier that due to the existence of some smooth functions, we get partitions of unity subordinate to an open cover. Moreover, since step 1 of the proof of 3.6 is valid for all open subsets of Rn, it follows that every open subset of Rn is paracompact. Indeed, it is also true that every subspace of Rn is normal because it is a metric space. But what is important here is that given an open cover for any subspace, there is a smooth partition of unity subordinate to that open cover, but the functions are all defined on the entire of Rn, okay, not on just that open subset thinking a little further along this line, okay, you will be able to prove the following theorem. Okay, this is, this I will get it as a corollary to whatever we have done so far. All this remark is for getting such a uh, motivation from Rn. Let x be a second countable locally compact Hausdorff space. Then, every closed subset of x is the precise zero set of a continuous real valued function. You can choose the, the codomain to be 0, 1, the closed interval 0, 1. Once you have this, it follows that such a thing is a g delta set also, because the precise set, zero set of a continuous function is a g delta set. Okay, you can just write it as intersection of inverse image alpha inverse of 0 close and 1 by n open. Okay, so, how do we prove this one? It is not difficult. Start with any f continuous x closed subset. For each x in the complement, choose a function alpha x from x to 0 1 such that alpha x at x is 1 and alpha x of f is 0. Okay. Consider the open cover u which is alpha x inverse of open 0 1 closed. x belonging to this f c I have such function right alpha x. So, take u to be this, this open set. This will be an open cover for f c. Okay. F c being a closed subset of a second countable say is second countable, locally compact and T 2. Okay? Therefore, it is paracompact. So, any open cover, so this open cover u, there is a locally finite open refinement. Further, by second countability, any open cover you can get a countable sub cover it will be again a locally finite refinement okay 
सो वी गेट ए काउंटेबल वोकली फाइनाइट ओपन रिफाइनमेंट यू एन एन बिलोंग इन टू एन आई कैन राइट लाइक दिस ऑफ यू ओके दीज यू एन आर नॉट नेसरली सबसेट्स ऑफ यू आई मीन दे आर नॉट मेंबर्स ऑफ यू बट दे आर रिफाइनमेंट दे आर कंटेंट इन सम मेंबर्स ऑफ यू सिंस ईच यू एन इज contained in some alpha x inverse of 0 1 that is the way it occurs right for some x we can select one alpha x such that and relabel it as alpha n instead of alpha x so alpha x n i am cut, cutting it short to alpha n that's all okay so define alpha now From x to zero infinity, no index here, right? Equal to sum of all alpha n's, but divided by two power n each of them. After dividing two power n, take the sum. These two power n's are there obviously to make the whole sum convergent. These alpha n's are bounded by you know they are zero to one. So any number zero to one divided by two power n summation is. convergent okay not only convergent it is uniformly convergent so alpha will be automatically continuous function now it's elementary thing to check that this alpha x is zero exactly on f that's all we want to prove okay so go through this uh, this proof carefully again and again maybe three times it doesn't matter okay the each step each way why you are doing all this somewhat uh, circus kind of thing they have meaning there next time we will do some general read result which comes from nowhere but the motivation is here if you know this one you know where it is coming okay Thank you.